In this video clip, we're gonna talk about core stabilization techniques, both static and dynamic, using body weight, as well as Navard lock training devices. Okay, so one popular static stability exercise is just your static plank. Now with this exercise, you're gonna line up your elbows with your shoulders, and you're gonna get into a static plank position. Don't let your hips pike. Don't let your lower back arch. There's absolutely no motion. You're just holding it for a set amount of time, keeping your core tight, and your pelvis or your lower back is in a neutral position. There's no movement. Okay, so that was a static plank. A progression of your static plank would be a dynamic plank, and this is working dynamic stabilization. In the dynamic plank, your core still remains engaged, your lower back remains in neutral, but your extremities are moving, your arms are moving. There should be no rotation of your spine. Everything else, your spine, your lower back should remain in one position. And it's gonna look like this. You're in your plank position. Come up, and back down again. Up and down, there's no rotation. To get you into the position, core stays tight and that's a progression from your static, your static plank to your dynamic plank. So now once you progress your client from the static plank to the dynamic plank, both of those exercises you are keeping your, your pelvis and your lower back in a neutral position, there's no movement. Unfortunately most functional or athletic activities don't revolve around you keeping your pelvis in one position. Uh, a lot of rotation is necessary. Um, if you're reaching, you're not gonna reach with a um, immobile lower back. You're gonna have to actually rotate. So what you wanna do at that point is strengthen the core and engage the core while moving. So it's what I call a stable mobility. It's like dynamic core training. Now there's a lot of tools out there to work this control mobility, but one good one that I found is Navard Fitness Systems Log Training. So one dynamic core stabilizing exercise is using the Navard device would be an uppercut. Now with this exercise, you keep your core and your lower back in neutral, and you're just gonna hold the log up on a diagonal. Again, there's very little motion in the spine. Maintain your hips square with in front of you and just come on with an uppercut. So that's your dynamic stabilization with a neutral spine. Now to further progress that dynamic stabilization exercise, you're going to progress from a neutral spine to a dynamic spine. And you're going to control the mobility by maintaining core engagement throughout. So your regular, Uppercut with a neutral spine is this. Now to make that more dynamic, you're gonna actually move your entire spine while keeping it stable. And that's another progression. You know, now one question I usually get is, why do I have to use the Navar fitness system device? Why can't I just use a weighted body part? And honestly, you can use anything you want. Uh, this system trains movement patterns. Um, if you can perfect the movement pattern, you will become more efficient and more coordinated. Uh, it actually will target in on your nervous system to help you be a better mover, better athlete, um, just better at functioning. So with that being said, with a lot of my clients, I'll actually start them off with just a plain wooden dowel. I mean, there's not very much weight to it. Whatever weight is centralized in your grip, and like the uppercut that I just showed you, you will train your client to effectively and efficiently move into these movement patterns. A lot of this movement exercise, uh, clients aren't gonna be used to. So to prevent injury, you really don't want to apply a lot of weight or a lot of resistance to them when they first start. 
Now the benefit of the Navard fitness uh, training system is that it has an offset handle. So it's similar to using a kettlebell instead of a dumbbell. The dumbbell, the weight is centralized in your grip. The kettlebell has an offset center, so it works your stabilizers in your grip. The same thing is true with this log training device. The handle is offset, so when you're using it, you're working your grip as well as all your stabilizers to a more challenging um, degree than if you were just using a body bar or a dowel. But um, the movement is what's important, so you can use anything that you want, just perfect that movement and become more efficient at that movement. Now, another question I get is, um, how much weight should I be using? Now these uh, log train devices, some of these regular ones don't weigh too much, maybe 10 or 15 pounds. Again, you're not working on strength in terms of a one rep max, you're working on, like I said before, being a better mover, developing more efficient movement patterns, um, focusing in on the nervous system, which will help you with speed, coordination, body awareness, uh, which will then help you to develop more strength. So you don't really need to use a lot of weight on your clients, you just want them to move. Uh, you will develop strength in the long run and you will actually get a great cardio and metabolic workout from it. Now in terms of progressing your clients from the static plank to the dynamic plank to more of the, what I like to call, Dynacore control mobility training, you want to keep an eye on certain things. Um, when they're doing the static plank, you want to keep an eye on whether they're dropping their pelvis or they're piking it after so much time of holding it. When they transition into a dynamic plank, you want to make sure that their low back isn't trailing behind as they come up and down or that they're not collapsing into their elbows. Um, you're also looking at how much rotation they're getting when they're going up and down. Once they perfect those techniques, then you want to get them to go into more of the controlled mobility uh, stabilization techniques, which is dynamic stabilization, but with pelvic or lower back motion involved while maintaining an engaged core.